In this video, we're going to begin our journey to become better listeners in earnest by discussing how and why we listen, just some foundational concepts of how and why we listen and begin that process of becoming more effective listeners. So first of all, to define listening just a little bit, um, we're going to define listening as the active process through which we make meaning out of, assess, and respond to what we hear. And I want to highlight just a couple things in this definition uh, so that we keep them in mind as we go through our listening skill improvement here. So first, listening is an active process. It's not just something that happens passively, and we'll discuss this a little more, but it's, it's an active process. It takes our active engagement. And during the listening process, we're going to make meaning out of things. We're going to interpret things. We're going to assess them and evaluate things. And then we're going to also respond as part of that listening process, part of the complete listening process. So there's more to listening than just, uh, you know, sound waves striking our eardrums. So to set this all up, first of all, listening is very, very important. As you can see here, it's our most utilized component of communication. When we consider the components of communication as speaking, reading, writing, and listening, we spend more than half of our time communicating, listening, either in a mass listening sense, meaning we're you know, watching TV or listening to the radio or even browsing the internet, those types of things, and face-to-face -face listening, where we're actually in conversation with someone else or some other people. Right? So we spend more than half of our time communicating, listening. So it's a really critical skill uh, for us in our just our both our personal and our professional lives. And it's also one of the most critical skills then in our professional and personal context. So it's listening and communication in general are skills that are highly sought after by employers and, and used extensively in the workplace. And so we need to become better listeners in the workplace as well as in our personal lives. It's going to benefit us all the way around there. So, uh, so this is an important topic, not only in our professional lives, but also our personal lives. With that in mind, I uh, want to take a look, though, at this. Uh, we have this skills shortage and why it exists. So, uh, first of all, uh, listening is something we do the most, but, but is it something we learn a lot about? So, listening is the first thing that we learn, right? When we think about those four components of communication, again, listening, speaking, reading, and writing, it's the first thing we learn how to do. Before we can speak, before we can read, before we can write, we learn how to listen, right? Hopefully, we, we learn to engage that skill. It's also the one we use the most, as we just discovered in that last graphic on the on the last slide there, right? And we use it more than 50% of the time that we're communicating, we are engaging in listening. So we use it the most, right? And then speaking next to most and reading and writing uh, the next two then. But as far as what's taught, and listening is a skill that needs to be taught. And as far as those skills being taught to us, it's actually the reverse. We spend the most time in our educational careers learning how to write. And then we spend the next most time learning how to read, you may get a little instruction in speaking. You may have had a public speaking course or had some instruction to give presentations and things like that. So, but it's it's a distant third behind writing and reading then. And listening, I would be surprised if you've had any uh, real instruction on effective listening. Uh, most of us have not. Unless, you know, we, we're in a career field that really requires that. That's something like therapy or something. We get virtually no uh, listening instruction. So it's the one we use, we learn first and we use the most, but it's the one we receive the least amount of instruction on, which is why there's such a skills shortage and why if you can really, uh, you know, increase your listening skills, then that will really make you stand out because it is such a shortage of skills in terms of effective listeners in the workplace and in personal life. But it'll really make you stand out having these effective listening skills. So there is a difference, though, between hearing and listening. Sometimes we use these words interchangeably, but they're not really the same thing. So let's differentiate just a little bit here between hearing and listening. First of all, uh, hearing is a constant thing. We, we can't really turn it off unless you have some physiological uh, situation where you have a hearing loss or whatever, but we can't really turn off our hearing. But listening is intermittent. We're not listening all the time. We're not always engaged in listening. Even when we're hearing, we're not always listening. So hearing is constant. Listening is intermittent. Hearing is a natural ability. You either can do it or you cannot. Again, if you have some physiological impairment that may uh, keep you from listen, or from hearing sorry, uh, effectively, then, then you don't have that natural ability, but you either have it or you don't. Listening is not a natural ability. It's a learned ability. It's very much not a natural ability. In some ways, it's very unnatural. So listening is a learned skill. It's something that we learn over time and through practice, but it's not a natural ability. 
Hearing is passive. We don't have to do anything to engage in the hearing. Again, but listening is an active process. We do need to. There's a there's a switch that needs to be flipped if we're gonna if we're gonna be an effective listener. So, uh, so we need to engage in in that actively, uh, as opposed to hearing, which is a passive uh, thing. Uh, hearing is only reception. Hearing stops at the reception. Sound wave is hitting your eardrums, and then it's being processed through uh, all these complex neurological things, which are amazing, uh, and I can't really explain effectively. So, but it's, it only involves receiving. Listening involves not only receiving that message, but understanding it, and then using that message and responding in some way. So you can see there's a difference between hearing and listening. It's not that hearing is not important, as we're going to talk about here, but uh, but they, it is different than listening. When we use those terms, they mean different things. So having said that, let's take a look at what actually happens then during the listening process. Um, the first step, even though we just differentiated between hearing and listening, the first step in the process really is hearing. It's receiving that message. And a big part of that is hearing, being able to hear. And we, we receive messages in other ways as well. We need to observe nonverbal behaviors and, and context and things like that. But um, receiving, hearing is a big part of that. So, but somehow we have to receive that message. We have to be able to, to take it in. If we can't, if we can't hear, it's really difficult to listen, right? If you can't hear what the person is saying, then you're not really going to be engaged in the listening process there. It's, it's going to be difficult for you uh, to do anything with listening. So receiving is really an important part of the listening process. But then we move on from there. We get into interpreting. Right? Interpreting, trying to make sense, trying to make meaning of what that person is saying. Um, so, uh, first of all, even, you know, it just involves speaking the same language, so to speak. You know, I mean, in a literal sense, you know, are we speaking the same language? Am I speaking English, but you're speaking Russian or Chinese? Then I may, and if I don't speak those languages, then I'm not going to be able to interpret what you're saying. Even if I can hear it effectively, I won't be able to interpret what you're saying appropriately. And, and the listening process becomes a real challenge then if you're not speaking the same language. That could also happen if you're both speaking uh, literally the same language. You're both speaking English, for example, but the other person is using terminology that you don't understand. So, for example, I'm not a very uh, technological person. I mean, I, I have the basics down, but uh, but somebody who's an engineer, for example, if they were talking about their field and talking about you know thermodynamics or talking about things like that, those are things I'm not going to understand. Even if, I'm not going to be able to interpret that effectively because I don't understand the, the reference and the terminology. So interpreting is the next important part. We have to be able to interpret and make sense, try and make some meaning out of that. Now, with that comes you know, some differences. You know, this is where we get into the idea of two people hear the same thing, uh, but they come to different understandings because they're interpreting it differently. Right? But interpretation is a part of the listening process, so that's our next step. So we have to receive the information, and then we have to process and that and interpret it, make meaning of it. Then we also have to, you know, store it away somewhere. We have to be able to recall this information, even if it's just in the short term, so that we can remember it for the duration of this conversation, so that people don't have to keep repeating themselves. That's critically important. But then we have to also identify what is it that I need to hold on to a little longer. Where, you know, what of this information do I need to store in my short-term memory, my medium-term memory, my long-term memory? Um, you know, how much of this do I need to, to, to really be able to remember? Um, so we need to, to process and identify that and then store it away somewhere. We need to, to be able to, to pull it out. We need to be able to recall this information. Okay. The next step in the listening process, then, is evaluating. We make evaluations about these things. We, we assess, we judge, we, we determine the importance. Well, you know, we determine not only the meaning, but then we determine is, how does this impact me? How does this impact what I need to know and what I need to do? So we evaluate information. We try and make sense of it in that way. And then finally, we respond. That's a part of the listening process as well, then, is to respond, to give feedback, even if that feedback is just a nod while somebody's talking, or a you know a subtle mm hmm mm hmm, or a go on, or if it's you know a more elaborate, here's what I think about this, and we're giving you know a longer response, but but all of those indicate in some way that we're listening in different ways, right? And so different responses are going to be appropriate, and we're going to have a totally different conversation about responding, but. But responding is a really important part of the listening process to kind of complete that cycle. So you can see we've moved all the way through, and there's much more to listening than just hearing. 
We're not only receiving that information, but we need to interpret it and be able to understand it in that way, make meaning of it. We need to be able to recall that information. We need to evaluate it and determine the importance and the, and the where it fits in and different things. And then we need to be able to respond appropriately as listeners. Now, there are different types of listening, and sometimes we illustrate this uh, with the, the use of a, a tree. If you imagine a tree, you know, trees have these strong roots, and at the bottom, they're really foundational stuff that the rest of it can't grow without that base, right? Uh, and then you get a little higher skills, and you get into the prettier stuff as you get a little, a little higher in that thing. So, anyway, we start at the base of that tree, the foundation of that tree, which is discriminative listening, right? Discriminative listening, which really just in its most basic form means uh, separating sounds and, and trying to identify, you know, what sound is this? This sound is somebody speaking and what language are they using and so forth. Uh, other times, you know, you're driving in your car and you hear a funny noise, so you may uh, try and identify what that noise is. Um, that could be discriminative listening as well. So we're just trying to identify, you know, the source of a sound or what that sound is. And, that, you know, so at our most basic level of listening, uh, that's what we mean. So we're the, the, just the base and the roots and the foundation of that tree, and we build from there. Sort of the next step up then would be informational listening. We're a little higher up here in, in terms of the tree, a little higher function. Uh, so informational listening is just what it sounds like. It's listening to, to, to take in information and trying to understand that information. Remember, we're going to need to be able to recall that information and things, but we, you know, a lot of times we do this in the classroom, for example. Informational listening, you're just taking information in uh, so that we can remember it either for the test or use it, you know, remember it for a skill to use later on. So we're using informational listening, trying to take that information in. The next stage would be critical listening, and this is a higher level uh, function of listening. So now we're not just listening to take information in, we're listening um, with the intent of analyzing that information and really, uh, you know, providing judgment or, or advice on that information maybe, or, but in some way we're listening critically, we're listening with a critical ear, not just letting it kind of, you know, roll over us and, and internalizing that information, but we're listening to it and saying, is this correct? Do I believe this? How does this work for me? And, and being very critical of that information in that sense. Not, not critical in a negative sense, but critical meaning we're analyzing, we're, we're, we're determining uh, usefulness and truthfulness and things like that. Finally, kind of the highest level of listening that we're going to discuss is empathetic listening, uh, which is at the highest level because it's one of the more difficult types of listening, and it has to do with um, listening to understand the other person, listening to be able to, to relate to that person, um, to, to be able to um, put yourself in their shoes, so to speak. Um, so empathetic listening can be a real challenge, and some people lean more towards this than others um, further away from it, but, but it really is a higher level type of listening that's used extensively, especially in personal relationships, when we're listening to understand and, you know, maybe just listening when somebody has a hard day, trying to understand where they're coming from or somebody's telling you about their situation. Those are empathetic listening situations. Good. So we have different types of listening then as well that we need to, to be able to uh, utilize and engage and we need to be able to use all of these types of listening. But people do have different types of listening styles, so to speak. And so we're going to talk about those just briefly here. Uh, some people are more people-oriented listeners, right? They're people-oriented listeners. They really emphasize uh, the other person and, and devote their time and their energy toward and, and make that, you know, so we're talking here almost more about empathetic type listening skills. Um, so there, there are those of us that are really people-oriented and, and give that attention, and that's great. There are also action-oriented listeners action-oriented listeners listen for, okay, what's my task here? What, what's my super, uh, I'm a superhero here. I need to jump into action. What can I do to help the situation? What can I do to resolve this situation? Right, so action-oriented listen, oriented listeners are always looking for, what can I do here to improve the situation? How can I help? We have content-oriented listening. Right? Again, we're in the classroom. You know, you're listening for information, uh, not listening to, to criticize or to do anything necessarily, but listening to take that information in and process it. And then finally, you know, the, the one we want to avoid really probably is time-oriented listening. These are people that you go to them and you say, hey, I want to talk to you about this. And they say, oh, okay, I have, uh, you have five minutes. I have five minutes I can give you, or I have 30 seconds. You know, can you fit it into that? Very time where it's not really conducive to, to listening very well, but, you know, I guess you take what you can get. So that's our basics for what we're going to be focusing on for the next uh, couple of videos here in improving our listening skills. 
If you have any questions, feel free to email me. I'm always happy to respond to emails. Uh, and in the meantime, happy communicating.